What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. Everything you need to know for week one, I'll be going over a bunch of different injury situations as well as a few different wide receiver cornerback matchups to watch out for. So it should be a good one. Um, obviously can't touch on every player. So if you have easy start sit questions, it'll take you 20 seconds to go check my answer by looking at our rankings at thefantasyfootballadvice.com. So let's get things started off as usual with the stat of the day. Yesterday's stat was last season, Travis Kelsey led all tight ends in target percentage inside the 10 yard line. Of tight ends with at least five targets inside the 10 yard line, who had the second highest target percentage? The answer was Vance McDonald and Hodder was the first one to get that one right. Today's stat, the Bucks allowed the most fantasy points to wide receivers last season. Which team was second? So which team gave up the second most points last season to the wide receiver position in fantasy? All right, let's talk about some injury information. The goal of this is to make you aware of all the different potential injuries we have this week, or I guess they are injuries, the potential issues that could arise from these injuries in week one. Um, I have to record this on Friday, obviously, to upload on Saturday, which means there is still a lot of time between when I finish this and Sunday. However, if you know about all these potential injuries in your players, then it'll be pretty easy for you to just quickly check for any sort of updates that happen later in the day on Friday, into Saturday, and on Sunday morning. Um, and you'll know that you need to have contingencies on these players if they end up being out. Also, you need to be following both me and Adam Scheffner on Twitter. I'll link both of them in the description. I think mine's always in the description. But I'll link both of them. Um, between the both of us, you're going to get all the injury information you need, all different news you need on Sunday morning. I'd also download the Sleeper app, and I would have a news alert sent, like a push notification on your phone. And then uh, at like noon on Sunday, I would check Twitter, Roto World, and Sleeper. Just make sure there's no surprise inactives. Make sure everyone's good to go. You know, there's nothing worse than thinking your lineup's fine, but then checking at 1.30 and you've got a dude that's inactive. Just make sure. There are injuries, there are crazy things that could happen this season. You want to be prepared. So, first guy we'll talk about is Mike Evans. Bruce Arians has deemed Evans a game-time call with a hamstring injury. This is a tough one. Uh, we know Arians has been known to lie basically whenever he gets the chance. Like, whenever he has an opportunity to tell a lie, he will. So, we really have no idea what's going on here. Uh, tough part with this one is that they play at 425 so if he doesn't practice on Friday, you might not know by the time the 1 o'clock games kick off, which is tough because maybe your bench options play at 1. Then if he's out, you have no one to fill him in. So here's what I do. If he practices Friday, I would assume he's fine that he's going to play, and then I would play him because he's Mike Evans. If he misses practice on Friday... Then you and if you still don't know Sunday morning, so let's just say misses practice Friday, and then you know how we always get those tweets from Scheffner at like midnight on Saturday into Sunday morning, and it's like, oh, he's gonna play, oh, he's still doubtful, things like that. Um, if at that point it's still, yeah, he is still a game time decision, then I would make sure you move him to the flex. This is one thing that people screw up all the time. Don't leave him in the wide receiver slot because then you have to replace him with a wide receiver. Move him into the flex, put a wide receiver into wide receiver two, and then you can still replace him with a wide receiver or a running back or I guess a tight end if you've got a backup tight end. Also, I'd make sure that you have one of those positions available at 425. This is, gonna, this is a good thing for literally any player we ever talk about. Move him into the flex. Have someone on your bench that plays at 425, the 8 o'clock game, either the Monday night games. You got to have that because then, you know, if we find out he's out at 4 o'clock, I guess it'd have to be an hour and a half before. So we find out at three that he's out, you have someone to replace him with. If your entire team plays at one o'clock and you just can't find a replacement to, to meet the criteria I just set, having him in the flex and someone else later on, um, and we still don't know his status come 11.30, like 11.30 when those injury reports come out, we still have no idea if he's going to play or not. Given that he is also facing Lattimore, someone that he's struggled with in the past, I would be fine benching him. I do not have him ranked super high because if this is a problem that he misses practice on Friday, we know that he's going to be limited. He's not going to be as effective. And since it is a brutal matchup and there's that risk you get a zero, again, if there's no one you have to replace him with, 
I am comfortable benching him because this is week one. You probably have solid options on your bench given how we generally draft. So just move him onto the bench, put another option in, into the flex. But hopefully you have someone that plays in the four o'clock games, someone that plays at eight o'clock tomorrow night, or I guess you guys will be watching this on Saturday. So in two nights uh, on Monday night, hopefully you have that uh, to be able to replace him with. Next up, Kenny Galladay. He also suffered a hamstring injury. Um, at least as of right now, his seems less severe. He tweaked it on Wednesday and was limited on Thursday. Um, if he practices at all on Friday, I would assume he's good to go and I would play him. They also play at 1 o'clock, so you're going to know for sure by 11.30. Um, and he also has a pretty nice matchup and a sneaky pace up spot. So if he's active, you're playing him, but be sure to check because it's a hamstring. People can tweak that. It can be worse than we think. Um, if he is a surprise inactive, then Marvin Jones becomes extremely interesting to play. It's unlikely you have to go there because, like I've said, it's, it's week one and you probably didn't draft Marvin Jones in a situation where you have to start him. But he'd be interesting for sure if Kenny Galladay is out. Uh, and then also Hawkinson would be an epic play. And I know a lot of you drafted Hawkinson because we were really high on him. He would be a phenomenal play if Galladay misses. But again, I think the most likely outcome is that he plays. Corlin Sutton, um, he sprained his AC joint on Thursday. It could have been a lot worse when we initially saw the injury. So thankfully, it's not too bad. Even if he doesn't practice on Friday, he could still play on Monday. But that's a small issue. You know, the Broncos are the last game of the week, right? So they're not even the first Monday game. They're the last Monday night game. So because of that, it would be a good idea if Jerry Judy's on free agency. Maybe you could add him and replace someone on your bench. Honestly, I doubt that he is, but that's the easiest fix. Um, I do think he's going to play through the injury. Uh, and given that it's not a leg injury, he should still be effective, right? If this was like a pretty bad leg injury, it's like, well, maybe he plays, but he's kind of just like jogging out there. It's upper body, so I guess there's a chance he can just get an injection and kind of play through it. Um, if you want to be risk averse, then it's not like it's a good matchup and it's week one, so you probably have a nice option on the bench. I have him as a wide receiver 25, if that helps you out at all. I'm not going to list off my top 25 or anything, but just look at the rankings. You know, if you have someone on your bench that's a wide receiver 22 and you want to be like, hey, maybe he doesn't play. I just want someone getting me points, and get, since this guy would obviously be ranked higher in general anyways, you know, maybe you play him. Um, I think we're going to get more news today that I'm recording this, so maybe you guys already know by the time you're watching this video. I think we'll get more news on Saturday, on Sunday, so I do think we're going to know prior to 1 o'clock. Uh, but again, if you want to be risk averse, you can put someone else in there instead of him. Um, Darrell Henderson up next. It looks like Henderson is going to be active, which is gross because it just means we're going to have a three-man committee behind a bad offensive line against a pretty solid run defense. If he ends up being active, then I don't really want any Rams running back this week. I still like Akers. I know a ton of you took him, uh, and you will be concerned, I guarantee you, uh, if he gets like seven, eight, nine touches but don't be. Akers is a long-term play. You know, he's expected to break out more halfway through and to close the season, not right in week one. If Henderson is active, you probably don't want to start any Rams running back. If Henderson is out, then I do think Akers is a very strong play, and I would look to get him in the lineups. Uh, but again, it's going to depend on what news we get on Henderson. But the latest news kind of seems like he's going to play. Another guy who we've gotten really good news on is... David Montgomery, pretty shocking, but he might actually play this week. He practiced on full Thursday. So if he logs a full practice today for me on Friday, then he might play this week. You know, and Cohen said that it looks like it never even happened. It's probably an exaggeration, but I mean, it's a great sign. You know, if you own David Montgomery, you were probably planning on him being out like two or three weeks. So the fact that he could come back this week, I mean, you don't even need to start him. That's just great news, right? It's just like, oh, you know, even if he doesn't play this week, 
the fact that he's close is awesome because it means he's probably going to play next week and he could play right away. I personally, even if we get news on Friday that he practices in full, I don't think we're going to know for sure prior to Sunday. Um, but it makes it interesting if he ends up being active. They didn't add any competition. So it's basically just Montgomery, Cohen, and Patterson. Uh, unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait and see, though. Like I said, I don't think we're going to know prior to Sunday, but they kick off at 1 o'clock, so we're going to know. So it's not that big of a deal. Just check at noon. If he ends up being out, replace him. You're going to know prior to all these different locks. And then if he ends up being active, I would want to check beat reports. So I want to see, is he active or is he going to get his full workload? We can't know right now, so we'll have to wait and see. Next up, we've got Miles Sanders. Um, he suffered a lower body injury on August 19th, so about three weeks ago. You guys know I love Sanders. I drafted him in three out of four leagues, so I'm all in on him, I guess. Um, unless we get unexpected news, he's going to be out there in week one. He might not get a full workload, but he'll still be heavily involved in the offense, and they're five and a half point favorites, so he should have a relatively positive game script for most of the game. I will be playing him in every league. Again, unless we get unexpected news, because I'm assuming he's fine. Mike Williams is trying to return from an AC joint sprain slash separation. I am much less optimistic about Williams than I am with Sutton. Plus, it's Mike Williams, you know? And I'd honestly be surprised if many of you drafted him, because we were pretty off him all off season. But if you did, it's not like you drafted him to be a starter in week one. So even if he's a surprise active... You don't need to play him. It's fine. Um, Jalen Rager was supposed to miss maybe a month of the season, but he just returned to practice in full on Thursday. Again, we'll see what happens on Friday, but that's a great sign for his potential in week one. I think he can have a good week against a fairly weak secondary, but you probably don't have to go there. Um, you definitely have better options that you drafted. So given that he is still hurt, um, I would keep him on the bench, see how much they use him in week one, see how he looks, uh, and then we can reevaluate moving into week two. Uh, but a great sign, even if he doesn't end up playing, just like Montgomery, a great sign that they're already returning to practice. And so hopefully they're good to go in week two, especially. Next, we have the duo in San Fran of Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. Debo Samuel remained out on Thursday. We'll see what happens on Friday. But Ayuk returned to practice, uh, though he was only limited on Thursday. Um, but him returning at all is a great sign. At this point, it seems very unrealistic that Debo Samuel will play in week one. But he should return relatively early in the season. As for Ayuk, he could possibly return, which is very exciting. Um, I have him stashed in my keeper league, in my money league. And I think that he's going to be a very large part of the offense this season. If he's on free agency in your league, which I know he is in a ton, I would add him. Um, but week one, I mean, I'm not starting him because he's my wide receiver six. I'm sure if you own him, that's roughly what he is. And so just wait and see. Um, but I really think that he's going to be used a ton this season when he's healthy. So I'm hoping they don't rush him back too early. Um, one last bit of injury news is Divine Azigbo. Uh, he was placed on IR, which means James Robinson needs to be owned in all leagues. But honestly, personally, I think LaVisca Chanel also needs to be owned. I posted it on Twitter uh, a few days ago, but I think that he's going to be one of the top waiver ads after week one. They're going to use him all over the field, um, and that includes at running back at times. I'm not expecting him to get like five to seven carries a week, but they want to just figure out ways to get the ball into his hands. And I think he's talented enough to produce in fantasy if they do so, which I think they will because he's like the second most talented uh, offensive player on that team, in my opinion. So you got to just get him the ball, right? Um, he's definitely the wide receiver too. Again, I think they'll give him end rounds. I think they'll line him up in the backfield at times. And so I would add him if you have room on your bench. If you're in like a 10-team league, with like five bench spots, you probably don't need to. But anything 12 teams and up, he should be owned everywhere. So those are a few injury situations. It's probably not all of them, but those are the main ones I wanted to go over. Um, you can just check my rankings, Twitter, Sleeper, Roto World. You're going to be fine if you just do those things. Um, any sort of updates that happen after 
I make this video. Um, I do want to go over some wide receiver cornerback matchups that I have been looking at because maybe that will help you if you're having trouble on a few start-sit decisions. First up is Amari Cooper. He's going to be matched up with Jalen Ramsey this week. Uh, in their last two meetings, Ramsey's held Cooper to a combined zero receptions in the two games. Uh, when he's not guarded by Ramsey, because Ramsey's not going to be on him every play, he'll shadow him, but he won't be every single play, um, he still only had five for 48 in the two games. So I have Cooper as wide receiver 22 right now. It is entirely possible you have two wide receivers and a running back that I have ranked higher than Cooper. Um, so it's possible you could bench Cooper this week. Again, it depends who you have, so check the rankings. Um, but it also does mean I've moved Gallup and Lamb up. So I think I have them both above uh, ECR right now, above where you would expect them to be on average. Because if Cooper is kind of getting shut down by Ramsey, well, they're still going to dominate. So they're still going to throw to Gallup and Lamb a ton. Um, Odell gets a brutal matchup with Marlon Humphreys. Uh, in his two meetings with the Ravens last season, Odell had two receptions for 20 yards in week four, and then four receptions for 44 yards and a touchdown in week 16. And the touchdown came in garbage time. Um, in week four, Humphrey did shadow Odell and he did nothing. Again, the two for 20. Then in week 16, Humphrey played on Landry, completely shut down Landry, and they used Peters and Jimmy Smith on Odell, um, still rendering him basically useless. The offense as a whole for the Browns is very likely to struggle this week. The Ravens are a very good defense uh, and they're a good enough offense to where if they get up, well, they like to run the ball a lot, so that could shorten the game uh, for the Browns. Ultimately, I have Odell as a wide receiver 27, so same thing as uh, with Cooper. You know, he's a great receiver, but it's very possible you have options that I have ranked higher, so maybe start them. Uh, Devonta Parker also has a brutal matchup against Jason McCourty. McCourty shut down Parker early last season, holding him to zero receptions on seven targets in week two. McCourty was hurt in week 17, though, and so they had to use Gilmore on him, and we all remember how that went. Um, I do expect them to go back to having McCourty on Parker this week and then leave Gilmore on Preston Williams, which basically means don't play Parker, don't play Preston Williams. They're only projected to score 17.75 points, so everyone will be touchdown or bust, so try and find a better option. Um, some positive matchups. We've got Deshaun Jackson facing you know, the entire Washington secondary. We know that Washington has a very good defensive line, an exceptional pass rush, and uh, the Eagles are a little bit banged up. So if you needed a defense, a very contrarian one, uh, especially for DFS, Washington, min priced. Uh, but for those of you, which is almost all of you in season long leagues, it is not the worst play in the world to play Washington. You probably have better options. I'm sure most of you drafted uh, either the Chiefs, the Colts, the Bucks or the Chargers, so just roll with them, because those of who we mentioned the entire season, um, or you could have taken the Bills as well. But if you're in a pinch and you got just a terrible matchup, Washington's not the worst idea in the world, but their secondary is much weaker than the pass rush, and so Deshaun should get open plenty deep. It's will he connect? I don't know. I have him in one league. I will be playing him in the flex, because I think if you give Deshaun Jackson a few opportunities deep, He's going to hit on one of them. Um, I do think that if Rager plays, it's more interesting. I'll bump Jackson down a little bit. But if Rager's out, I think you've got to be playing Deshaun Jackson. Um, Tyler Boyd gets a good matchup, mostly because he should avoid both Casey Hayward and Chris Harris. Um, Hayward is likely to shadow A.J. Green. And the word is... Harris is going to be moved out of the slot to play outside corner this season. And if that happens, then Boyd has the easiest matchup of any player on the Bengals. And he's got the best rapport so far with Burrow. So I think he would uh, be a very good play this week. And the last one is Jameson Crowder. More by default than by specific matchup. Obviously, everyone knows that Tredavious White is one of the best corners in the league. But he sticks to one side and plays outside, so the Jets can just put Mims or Perriman over there. Uh, the Bills have great safeties, but what are they going to do against Crowder, right? If Crowder's in the slot, you're not going to bring the safeties down to him. So I'm expecting him to have a good game, not a monster game, because I don't think the Jets are going to play very well. But could he rack up seven or eight receptions and be great in PPR leagues? Absolutely. So I'd look to get him in the uh, flex spot in a PPR league. But guys, that was a lot of information, uh, but I think that it 
is going to help you a little bit more in making those start sit decisions. Again, if you have some that have not been answered by any of our videos this week, somehow, then it can be answered in seconds by just going to our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com, and looking at my rankings. But guys, that is the end of this one. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, how about hitting that like button, and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new? Thanks for watching.